So Grace, here we are uh, as and am finalist and you're no stranger obviously to fashion prizes and the whole process. I mean, how do you I guess sort of feel being being a finalist of of and am and and coming into this prize process not necessarily as a new new designer. I guess every new experience feels feels different and I think that as I've been showing now at Paris Fashion Week um, digitally since last June, it's, it's really um, exciting to kind of think about how I develop the brand uh, more internationally. And um, so it, it, in some ways it feels quite unfamiliar, this um, process, even though I've, 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 I've kind of been parts of different awards before, it feels like the being kind of centered around um, kind of development in France, it feels, feels quite new and um, it'll be interesting I think. I mean if the pandemic hadn't hit would you have taken it in a much more kind of I guess a more physical format and because your shows in London have always like been about this almost this immersive experience where being there. Yeah I'm, I'm really interested in showing my collections physically in Paris I think that feels like quite a natural step for Wales Bonner um, and yeah, bringing the collections to kind of a global audience and thinking about how that kind of experiential element translates in different places, in different contexts. So um, it's really interesting to me, for sure. I guess, do you have like a, a succinct way of summing up Wales Bonner? Uh, I think the intention of Wales Bonner is to bring an Afro-Atlantic spirit to European luxury. That's the kind of intention of the brand. And it was kind of, it was created as a means to elevate the location of blackness within culture fashion and culture so i think that's kind of like the the mission and and kind of um what the brand's about mm. and in the context of the last year not just like with the pandemic but socially speaking politically speaking it's been, I mean, it shouldn't be called like a reckoning for the, for, the, for, the, for the fashion industry. I mean, it's a question that should have been examined like continually beforehand. But has, with that in the background, has that given you like, I guess, more impetus? And as you said, like doubling down on what you represent? Probably this time of reflection has allowed me to actually appreciate the importance of, of my work and the work of um, um, many other designers. You know, in this time, I don't feel the need to be reactive because I feel like I've uh, naturally um, been working to kind of broaden representation since I've, since I've started um, yeah. the brand. So it, I, in that way, I feel like my feelings about this current situation haven't necessarily changed or it's like the reason for me starting the brand is still important. Mm. Um, do you define, would you define Wales Bonner as still like a, an inherently British brand yourself? Yeah, I'm like British Jamaican. Um, I, I quite like the idea that Wales Bonner is hard to place kind of like it's locations hard to place and I think that's something I've I've thought about um that it could maybe come from anywhere but I, I'm definitely influenced by the multiculturalism of Britain that really has shaped my yeah. development creatively so then yeah. with Andam Prize Obviously, if you did win, it's an increased amount of money this time round. Uh, how would it uh, change Wales Bonner as a brand and its development? And yeah, how would you use that prize money? I think Wales Bonner's kind of been developing and evolving um, and kind of crystallising the vision of, of, of itself and I feel like it's in a really um, good good position. I think I'm I'm looking to really develop the brand in in France and um, you know um, on a more kind of international.
platform and to kind of be supported to, to develop the brand in a more global context.